So what I see is that a lot of beginners, they approach totally different how they should write code. For some reason, whenever you get a problem, let's say you're a junior developer, you get assigned a task, right? On the daily stand-up, you get assigned a task. Most people, what they do, they, they just go here to the writing code. That's not how you're supposed to, to be doing that. And here's this diagram. It's approximately outline how I used to do it when I was working on 50k or 100k pr projects. Obviously, I was not the only one developer there. So when you get a new problem, the first step that you should be doing is you should understand the problem. Sounds obvious, right? How can you develop something that you don't understand? Well, it's not obvious. Me as a developer, the first year and a half probably working as a developer, I was really not caring about understanding the actual business problem. Why are we solving something? Or is there actually a problem? Do we even need to write any code? And understanding the problem is actually way harder than it seems because you need to understand the actual business behind. And especially as a Salesforce developer, you usually work with a, I mean, we have a sales in the world, right? a Salesforce developer. So you usually work quite close to the business. This is what I liked about the Salesforce ecosystem and being a developer in the Salesforce ecosystem is that you get to, to see a lot of different businesses and you get to see how they operate. You get to see, maybe to speak to a couple of team members, maybe even to speak to salespeople and see why do, do you need to build, build exactly this solution. So you really need to understand why they're actually even trying to solve it and what are we trying to solve. Maybe you will even need to sit down with a sales rep and explain to you how the sales rep is doing, what are you currently trying to optimize. So it can take a lot of time to actually understand the problem and understanding the problem is not understanding what you need to do. What you need to do is the second step or like a third or a fourth step. First, you need to understand why, why are you trying to do what you are assigned to do? Once you really understand the problem, if you already have a little bit of experience and if you followed my advice from all the other social networks, then you know that you kind of should be building up your database of solutions that you already have solved. So most likely you're going to have some kind of database of uh, problems that you already have solved on the job. If no, go and create immediately right now uh, after this video. Oh yeah. So you look at your data bank and you see either you already have similar problem or you don't obviously two choices. The thing is that after you have, I would say around three years of experience, most problems that you will face will be in some way recombination of problems that you've seen already. I would say about 70% or 60% of problems won't be new. So you will know how to solve them. At the end, there's a limited amount of code that you can write. So there is only triggers, scheduled, cubules, batch. There's only that many tools that you can use in Apex. So Apex is not endless. So most likely if you have a little bit of experience, you already have solved this problem in some or another way. Uh, if not, you should not go and start immediately coding. Instead, you should go through the ideation process. It's basically this creative step. If you have no idea how to solve the problem, you have never seen, you have never solved this problem yourself, and it's not a recombination of other problems. You go and try to find on Google how other people have solved it. So if you're trying to build a data table, you go and see how other people have built data table and you can see what failed. You write down, maybe you write something like this Excalibur draft, you, you put different, different solutions, different, different problems here on the board. You see what works, what, what doesn't work, what are your assumption. And then usually you need to let your brain a little bit boil with all of these ideas. And the best way you approach it is that you just come back the next day. Well, I know not all the time you can do that, but that's the best way. So you create multiple different ideas. If you're a junior, then you can even send those ideas and to your senior or your mentor and you can say, Hey, I found this, this, and this ideas. Can you help me? And can you see what are the best from your experience? And the senior developer either going to have this data bank in mind or going to have like actually written down the database of solved problems. And he will like, just say, okay, I, I know that this problem should be solved in that way. You go through this ideation process, you write it down and in some way you should decide for one of the solutions that you found. You, you say, okay, I think having this and this and this assumptions, I am 85% sure that that will be the best solution. And the way you phrase it is important because 
if you have to communicate with your team members, this is a really powerful communication technique. You say, I am to 85% sure, which basically means that you're mostly sure, but you also leave some room basically for being wrong. It's a very powerful way and it's a very precise way. So it signals basically very, very clear how sure you are about something. You, you write or you state for yourself, if you're a middle developer, senior developer, you state for yourself that, okay, I'm quite sure about the solution. And then you plan out the solution. It doesn't have to be a super huge plan. Uh, either I use Figma for planning out interfaces, uh, if there are some interfaces, or I use Mirobot for planning out the user flow, or I plan it here in Excalibur. So, but you need to have some kind of plan. And I think the more junior you are, the more technical the plan should be. And the more senior you are, the less technical it should be. And once you have the plan, only then you start writing code. Of course, the only exception to this is that you can write code on the ideation process to just test out if the solution that you're thinking about, if it's even possible. But it usually shouldn't take you more than just a couple of hours to just prove that this solution is possible. And then it's important when you write the code, so when you're on this stage, when you write code, you don't try to write the whole thing. Again, you try even, you can build out the plan for the whole thing approximately. First, your plan is going to be, most likely it's going to be wrong at the end, right? So you cannot really plan. We are here not in the waterfall model. We, we don't try to plan everything in advance. No. Instead, you write code and you try to ship as early as possible some kind of version of working version to the client to get feedback. You're not trying to like execute on the whole plan. No, you're trying to get the feedback as quick as possible because how do you actually know if what you're solving is correct? And trust me, in 95% on all cases where I was shipping the first version of functionality to the client to set it out, the client had a huge list of improvements what can be improved like and those were improvements that i have never thought about that they were not logical for me because judging from my experience that's not the way people usually used to operate from my experience but i was wrong because they are the business they know it better they know better the way they will have their functionality so only they can know they can't even write it down they can only tell it to you once they see it and there are so many things that in software engineering can be only done once you ship them to the client. You cannot make decisions for them. You have to follow them. So yes, you can write this awesome plan, but at the end, you need to present the end result to the client and then reiterate on this, on this whole thing. And again, the whole reiteration, it goes through the same process. Or maybe it just fits into your plan and then you can just execute on the plan. Now, here's an important caveat. You don't have to go through a lot of these things if you already have solved the problem. But you do need to go through understanding the problem. Don't skip these steps. It's so important. And this is a reminder for me as well, because this is something that I kind of don't like to do. You, you, like, you see what needs to be done and you have the urge of actually starting and going coding because this is the fun part. But the least fun part will give the best results for the business that you're working on. It's going to give the best results for the client and which is actually your job. Your job is not coding. Your job is to solve the business problems for the client. That's it. Thank you.